Hi portrait painters. Today we're going to paint a full color portrait from a black and white photo. First thing I did was crop my photo into this square format that I love so much. I thought this portrait of Chief Charging Bear would be perfect for this demonstration. I'm using only two oil paints to start, a fast drying white and transparent oxide brown and a little bit of walnut oil gel. And my favorite brush, number four, long haired filbert. Hi Sharif, this video is for you. I wanted to show you how I turned a black and white photo into a colored portrait. First thing I did was found uh, some images on the internet that had the skin tone that I thought would work perfect uh, for this portrait. He is a Native American Indian, so I was looking to the skin tones that um, are mostly seen here in these photos. I wanted a more dramatic portrait, so I'm going to keep the saturation and the colors a little bit toned down. I'm working on a toned canvas. It's actually a canvas that I had kind of laying around. I had prepared it for a different painting, but I really wanted to go ahead and do this portrait of Chief Charging Bear, so I figured why not? I'll use this canvas. So here we go. I just laid in uh, some grid marks with a white charcoal pencil. Uh, they are just 50%, 25%, and 75% equal quarters. And no underdrawing or anything like that, just a little grid work to have uh, some framework to keep me in check. Initially, when I'm doing a black and white portrait, which I'm going to be colorizing, I like to keep the initial colors that I'm laying down very simple. Sometimes I'll even do a one color underpainting using like a transparent oxide brown by itself and that works best if your canvas is not toned, you're working on a white canvas. So since the canvas was toned, I wanted to add in the white with the transparent oxide brown. I'm using a fast drying white so that I can apply the color on top of it pretty quickly the next day. Although this dried really fast. Um, it dried almost by the end of the day when I was working on it. It took about two days to complete the portrait. Um, the white uh, mixed with the transparent oxide brown really gave the perfect skin color for this Native American Indian. And I was looking to John Coleman. You can see here his painting of his Indian chief as sort of a guide to how I wanted the drama in this portrait to play out. I really wanted some dark, dark, some light, light areas and uh, to kind of keep it laid out in this interesting way that John Coleman did. So then I put my portrait next to his colorized version as sort of a guide to aspire to. I thought I was gonna add all of this color in <laughs> towards the end. I'm still leaning towards doing it at this point, but really as the portrait starts to unfold, let it speak to you. Let it tell you how much color that you think it's going to need. It's funny how you plan for portraits to look. You start with an idea, but as you're painting, just allow that idea to mature or grow if it needs to. So by keeping the palette very simple, just the two colors, it allows you to focus on the drawing, which when you're doing a portrait is very important. You want the likeness of your sitter. So that's what I'm focusing on now. Once I get the likeness down and the face painted in, then I can start having fun. So when you're looking at a black and white photograph to use as a painting reference, just look for a photograph that has some nice dramatic lighting. You don't want to use a photograph that's flatly lit. You want to see some shadows in the face. That's going to allow you to really punch up that 3D effect. If you're using a bad photograph, you're going to have to have enough skill level to be able to fake the lighting. It's very important that you have these shadow areas so that you can really push the realistic um, volume in the face. This photo I found in um, the Wikimedia Commons area. Uh, I knew right away it was perfect. It had all the beautiful dramatic lighting that I was looking for and it had that gorgeous headdress which I really was excited to paint. 
So as some of you may know, I am working on a series of Western paintings. So this is fitting in perfect with my new genre. Um, just a little background on Chief Charging Bear. Uh, his name is also known as John Grass. Uh, he was born 1836 and he lived until 1918. Uh, he is chief of the Lakota people and it's the Sihasapa Blackfeet Band of the Lakota people. He fought in the Battle of Little Bighorn in Montana. He went through the grueling um, occurrence called the Sundance to prove his endurance. It's a physical and spiritual test that is offered in sacrifice for one's family and community. Um, they dance around a pole, fastened to it with rawhide thongs pegged through the skin on their chest. So it's definitely uh, a difficult thing to do. Um, it's a Lakota sacred ceremony. Uh, also, uh, Chief Charging Bear was integral in building relationships with the West, with, with the um, new Plains people that were moving into their areas. Uh, it was one of his goals to help bring the people together and hopefully let everybody live in harmony. We all know how it turned out, but that was his hopes. So in my um, creating of this new series, I want to really help preserve the idea and the way of life for um, American heritage, the Old West, cowboy life, and Native American way of life. And when doing the Native American paintings, I want to always attach a story to that painting and help people understand a little bit about that uh, tribe's thought on their way of life. So the other thing that Sharif asked me in the comments was to help her understand how to add color <laughs> to white cloth. I do have a video about that. I'll leave a link here so you can see um, learning to paint uh, white with Bouguereau. That that video went into great detail on how to do that, but the main thing with painting white fabric from a black and white photo, white's going to reflect any of the colors that are found in the surrounding areas. So if someone's outside on a light um, sky blue day with bright sunlight, you're probably going to see a lot of yellows and blues, maybe some light greens in the white cloth or even here we have white feathers, we have white leather in the headband part of the headdress, and then there's a white um, bow tie, there's the white boning in the front of the chest. So you can build up the reflective colors on those pieces. You can reflect skin, like the chin area can reflect down onto the white bow tie. Uh, some of the colors in the headdress could reflect over onto the boning of the chest and then some of the colors from the headdress could also be reflecting into the feathers. Truly white can be quite colorful. All right here's a look at my palette. You can see where I'm at about now of just using the two colors still, the transparent oxide brown, that quick drying uh, white, and the walnut oil gel just to help loosen up and keep some of the transparency even when I'm using the white. So the face is done. Now I'm gonna have some fun. I pulled out the palette knife. Something that I don't do a lot, I don't know why, I really enjoyed it, it was perfect for the feathers in the headdress. I for some reason thought it would be a good idea to lay in those dark areas first and then I can come back with the white feathering over top of that. I'm using the dark um, areas of the headdress kind of as anchors for everything that's gonna build on top of that. But I really enjoyed <laughs> kind of spreading on the dark paint with that palette knife. It was like icing a cake, sort of. <laughs> I was thinking a lot about the composition 
while I was composing the idea of this painting and I really loved the fact that I had this great hard diagonal coming down from the bottom left shooting towards the face. I mean everything about this the, all the different angles pointing right to the face and the face being in the center off center slightly I tend to not do anything kind of centered that's just me it could have been centered but I liked it off to the side a little bit and just uh, all those different bits of black just aiming right at that face just pulling that viewer straight in straight into the eyes is, I, is what I feel like the vocal point is and I love the fact that <clears throat> Charging Bear is looking directly at the viewer. I really wanted it to be as if he was looking directly into your soul as you viewed him. So while I'm laying in some of these um, bits of white, I'm really thinking about mark making. I want to really push the different types of brush strokes I'm playing around with different brush sizes, different brush textures, seeing what I like. Uh, if you are experimenting and you're laying down brush strokes and for whatever reason you don't like the results, you can always scrape it off and then do it again. That's the beauty of oil paints. There's no permanency until you say so. So up to this point, I've still only used the two colors, the transparent oxide brown and the fast drying white, the titanium white. Now in areas of uh, his face, you can see that there's a little bit more saturation, like on the cheeks and the bridge of the nose. In that area, I just used the transparent oxide brown which is not opaque, but in a thicker uh, application onto the canvas. The areas where it's less saturated, I've let the transparent nature work for me and added a little bit of the white to tone down the saturation. So I'm controlling the saturation by pushing the transparency or pulling back the transparency and making it a little bit more opaque. And you can see it's working really well. There's a lot of volume in his face. I mean, just look at the cheeks and the way that it folds in and then the muzzle area of that upper lip kind of rolling outwards and creating that uh, convex shape. And then the volume of the nose, you can really see the roundness on the tip of the nose and it dips in a little bit into the eye socket area. I mean, you've really got uh, lots of hills and valleys throughout the face. So with this boning detail on the chest, I laid in a lot of the white and then I went back and put some of the shadow and a little bit more detail in with a bit of transparent oxide brown that I even made more transparent by putting in a little bit more of the walnut oil gel. Now titanium white already <laughs> is pretty opaque. It does not have a transparent nature, so I added the walnut oil gel to the white. You could also use a flake white or a lead white, which is gonna be a little bit more transparent. So there's a few ways you could go about painting a colorized version of a black and white image. Uh, you can go with a toned down initial application of color, kind of what I've done here, or you could go full on with uh, heavy brush strokes of very saturated, more exact colors. Like when I'm doing a selective start portrait, I'm uh, mixing up my palette and I'm laying down those brush strokes pretty thickly with the exact color uh, with those initial brush strokes. Uh, with this portrait, I just wanted to kind of build the color up slowly. I initially knew 
that I was going to use the glazing technique and you'll see that come into play here in a minute. So I wasn't concerned with putting down a lot of color initially. Anywhere that I needed to add color, I was going to do that on top of what I uh, initially laid down in the more subtle uh, browns and brown and white mixtures. Now just to solidify some of these darker areas, I did add a little bit of Viridian Green to the palette and mix that with the transparent oxide brown to create some really dark, dark uh, colors that would simulate black. I don't really use black too much, but uh, this was going to be my black on the canvas. So here I'm really thinking about mark making with these feathers and boy was this fun. I'm just uh, looking at the reference, seeing what areas are a little bit more um, grayed down, which ones have the bright white areas, which ones are darker and I'm just imagining laying down these same shapes and I'm uh, channeling my John Singer Sargent by doing it in as few brush strokes as possible. Now when I load the paint onto the brush, you can see I'm almost doing this as like a sculpting type of uh, maneuver. I'm not licking the canvas, I'm not brushing up and back and forth. I don't want to kill these brush strokes. I just want to lay it down maybe just as long as the hairs are on the brush, if not uh, maybe a little bit shorter. But just little succinct brush marks and have grabbed uh, one of my more stiffer fan brushes I wanted to see what kind of marks that would make and then uh, I'm pulling it through some of that wet paint just to get different effects there in areas where the white's just a little bit more grayed down and kind of see through. So here's a look at my palette. You can see in that upper left corner of the palette that's where I've got that um, Viridian Green and Transparent Oxide Brown mixture and everything else is still just the white and a transparent oxide brown with the walnut oil gel. And coming up here, I'm gonna finish the headdress and start with the glazing using Alesian Crimson and walnut oil gel. So when glazing, you wanna make sure that the painting you're glazing over top of is dry, and it is, because we use that fast drying titanium white mixed in with our brown, which is already a fast drying paint, so it really dried quick. And I, I haven't glazed in a long time, and wow, this just really um, brought the skin tones to life. It, I feel like it breathed life into the face. It really let me um, punch up some of the realism and just adds a beautiful depth of color without being too heavy handed. And you can always apply the glaze and then wipe it away in areas where you feel like you might have too much glaze. And then also areas that are a little dull. I've got some sunken areas from the dark uh, gray undertones that were there initially. So I'm going to grab some of the transparent oxide brown, pull that down at the bottom here next to the Alesian Crimson, and I'm gonna go over top of my darker sunken in areas with that walnut oil gel and the transparent oxide brown with just a touch of the Alesian Crimson pulled in, and it's just gonna really add some nice depth in those dull, sunken, dark, dark, dark areas. So if you're a little unsure about the skin tone that you're wanting to have from your black and white photo, this is a great way to kind of dip your toes in slowly and add color. So you could use other transparent colors like transparent um, yellow oxide, you could use transparent red oxide, you can blend these colors together to get different degrees and then just transparently apply them to your dried underpainting and if you don't like it, it just wipes right off. So that's the beauty of glazing. If you do like it, you can let it dry. You feel like you need to add a little bit more, then you can do that. I mean, it's just really a nice, subtle way uh, with no fear <laughs> to add color to a less colorful uh, underpainting. 
So this has been really fun. I'm gonna do another black and white photo with a different um, skin tone attached to it so you can see how I approach it. And I'm super uh, thankful, Sharif, for your comment and letting me know you wanted to see how this uh, is done. So this is just one way. There's many ways to do it. And uh, I'll see how the uh, technique turns out in the, uh, the next one that I do. And you guys leave me uh, more comments about other videos that you want to see, anything that you want to learn or uh, get more in depth about. Uh, I'm happy to do those videos for you guys. So I wanted to add a little pop of color. So I've got the vermilion red here on the palette and I'm adding it in in just some of the little areas around the headdress and in the beading. And I initially had gotten this John Coleman painting as uh, my aspiring <laughs> level of color that I was going to work towards but really I was just so pleased with the lack of color in this painting that I just couldn't bring myself to add all that other color so just these little hints of red I felt were enough to make this portrait sing uh, my last portrait I did uh, of Brian the cowboy it had a lot of saturation in it and I kept thinking I wish I'd pulled back a little on the saturation with that portrait so with this one I wanted to build up slowly and it, it just really uh, spoke to me at this point and said this is enough color and uh, here's where we ended up I think it turned out pretty cool thanks guys I'm glad you've been here with me on this ride through the colorization of this portrait from a black and white photo uh, let me know if there's anything else that you guys want to see and I'll uh, take that to note and hopefully get a video done for you. All right guys, thanks, I'll see you in the next one.